I'm talking to Chris Bowie, who is a pioneer in the use of collective intelligence. Chris, in what ways have you used collective intelligence over the years? Well, since 1991, I've been able to work in many different kinds of multi-stakeholder meeting environments. What that means is town hall type environments where the general public comes together to give their feedback and input into critical issues facing their community. And so that means we have elected officials, city staff, and other types of organizations that already exist in a community. And what we went out to do in uh, the 1992 campaign for the United We Stand America program was figure out what would the public take ownership of? What would they really buy into using a wireless interactive voting device? Um, Systems called Option Finder. It was the number one meeting system in the world for business organizations. Part of our mission was to get that into the hands of the public and really figure out what works if you're trying to find collective intelligence or shared wisdom with a group of people. So you use an electronic device which looks something like a television remote control with buttons and people press the buttons to vote? Correct. The wireless keypad device allows everyone to anonymously and equally participate it's really key that there's an anonymous function because what we have found over time that people will vote differently versus raising their hand when asked to do something that everyone in the public can see or voting anonymously using the device. The device also allows us to get people's identities, meaning who, what's your background, what are some of the demographics that make you a unique particular person, what's your gender, your age, your ethnicity, where do you live, what do you do for uh, your so, career. So let's say you're having a town hall meeting, so you distribute these devices to everybody, and are they registered with the device? So somewhere there's a piece of paper associated with the device that gives this person's demographic information? No, there's no piece of paper. All the information is kept inside the keypad, and so that's mm-hmm. what makes it anonymous. And so what's really powerful is that, well, let me take a step back. The most important thing about using a tool where everybody gets to vote is what you put into the system to vote on. So it's all about creativity and idea generation. That means people need to trust each other. They need to be asked really good questions and given the kind of an environment where they can come up with good ideas. And that's one of the most important things about collective intelligence. If you want to find good outcomes or common ground or make decisions, there needs to be a level of trust and relationship amongst the people who are there and then they have to come up with good ideas. Now, who comes up with the questions? If you're organizing this uh, method, are you the one who decides what the questions are to ask the audience? A core principle of what we have found that works is, is it's vital to engage the participants in every step of the process. So that means there's a design team of representative groups from the participant, broad stakeholder groups, everybody who's going to be in the room to help design the content. We can also have small conversations, and this is something that is the model, where we ask an organizing question. In this case, it would be, what are the most important topics and issues or questions that we want to focus on as a group? Have conversations at, let's say there's 20 tables. And they would come up with the one or two best topics or questions that they think as a table group, everybody should take a look at. So then we have a blank screen. Each table reports what they came up with. We put those ideas into a projector system on a screen where everybody sees them go up. We get as many as people want to put up, in this case it would be anywhere from 25 to 30, maybe 40 questions or topics. We make sure the intention and purpose is clear on every idea, and then each person gets, gets to give a 1 to 10 value of level of importance or priority for each item. That's really important. Everybody gets to give an equal vote on every item, and then immediately you'd get back whatever the top five, six, seven, or ten items are, and then that's what the group would then work on. You'd start with the number one item, say that's our first issue, our first question, we're going to focus on that, and then get through as many as you can, but the group decides that. The group makes that choice. Well, let's say you're able to determine what the group thinks. Does that become binding on the people who make the decisions? Like, let's, let's say you're at a city council meeting, yeah. and for example, somebody is requesting a zoning variance. They want to build an extension on their house, and the neighborhood is not zoned for that. And some people don't like the idea. Some people don't care. And they all vote. They have, uh, you know, they give their feedback. Who makes the final decision? There's a there. There's a huge difference between asking people to have collective participation. Collective participation is everybody gets to come together and vote on stuff. Then there's collective engagement. Engagement means it's the people's ideas, it's the participants' ideas that are being worked with. Then there's empowerment. And empowerment means that we've designed into our entire plan, the entire architecture of what we're doing, a commitment from decision makers 
that we will seriously consider, of course, no guarantees can be made, the outcomes and the recommendations from the group that's been brought together. So you say that trust is very important. Now, how do you create that? You might have a meeting in which people have very different interests and maybe opposing right. interests. Right. Yeah. The, the formula to create trust is everything has to be transparent and out in the open. That means every question you ask needs to be able to be questioned. And people need to be able to say, well, what if we changed it like this? And then uh, does that make more sense for the group to work on? And then all the content that gets put into the answers to that question, every participant sees all of the ideas go up. And so they're a part of that process. And then at the end of the example I gave of 20 tables with 20 ideas, one from each table, if any participant in the room does not see their number one idea up there, they have a chance to add it to the list. And if they don't want to say it out loud, they can write it down. That's another key thing. Potentially, somebody might have a great thing they want to share, but they're uncomfortable doing it verbally. So you have to create all these different mechanisms of getting the ideas on the table. But then when it's an equal vote on each one, and this is the test, the person who might not agree with the specifics of the outcome agrees with how it was done. And the way that we use the tool, it's not a majority wins process. Because it might be the, the 20th item that had the lowest average for everyone in the room. Maybe 10 people gave it an 8, 9, or a 10 out of 100. Maybe they gave it an 8, 9, or a 10, 10 people. We'll see that. And we'll go down there and say, wow, that's really interesting. Even the one that got an overall average of a 5, 10 people gave it an 8, 9, or a 10. Why do you think somebody would feel that way? And so we've turned it into an inquiry, an appreciation, and an opportunity to really connect on why there's different views and different opinions. So you make sure you understand the reasons for all the objections. Whether you accept them or not is different, but you make sure you know what everybody is thinking. Absolutely. The, the, the dialogue process, the dialogue and deliberation. Let me, let me back up. The, the field of dialogue and deliberation is at a critical revolutionary breakthrough point in our country. And there are many different forms and practices to surface what would be what we call diversity of opinion, what we call the fact that people have different ways of looking at things, and the idea of a consensus awareness that everyone who's a participant can understand these differences, and everyone will walk away with those differences as part of their understanding is critical to success. Now, now granted, this is all based upon having a common ground of seven or eight or maybe ten things that everybody says, yeah, these stand out for us the most. And so having that common ground allows you to go into where there's diversity and it radically changes the conversation because you've already got this common ground. Now, you're applying your methodology at this conference today. We're at a collective intelligence conference mm -hmm. and people have these devices. So what do you expect to come out of your use of these technologies at this conference? How will the conference or the outcome of the conference be improved by using this methodology at the conference? The way we use the tool at the conference is we asked, what are the most important areas and focus opportunities that the program for the future can nurture and encourage? And so that question was put out to all of the participants, and we got 21 ideas that was the best thinking from the 21 table groups inside the room. And then we worked the process. We applied the interactive tool, letting everyone vote equally on each item, and from that, Seven of them really stood out from the rest. Two of them were the common ground that had two of the highest votes that really stood apart. But we then took the top 10 and used that as a basis for the conversation on the second day so people could have a broader range of areas to actually create actions, programs, specific tactical things that they could do between now and the next year. What the, what the interactive collective intelligence system does, if you use it well, is it takes what's invisible in a room, all of the lines of communication, the shared interests, the things that people really should be working on together, the affinity groups, and it makes it visible, literally. Meaning, if we have the names of the people next to their keypad number, we can press a button and give you the list of the 10 people who want to work on one project, the seven people who want to work on another. And so the idea is that when you use this tool over time, that's when the magic happens. When a group of participants knows the capacities and the capabilities of a, of a collective intelligence system put inside an effective process, they take ownership of it. They see breakthrough opportunities that you just don't get when you first start with the group. 